Hi, this is Jan Riley, and I am here with Lauren Solomon, and I would like to welcome you to World Love Week. This is a, a time where everybody's really discussing how amazing it is that people are finally making a connection between love and business and making the world a better place and I'm super thrilled to have you here Lauren because when I thought about love and business really honestly you personified that to me because wow. you have such a, a real genuine uh, expression of love and support and just a really dynamic personality that's always been so uplifting to other people and that is really to me what made your business so successful besides your skill and experience but you know I thought I really want to hear what you have to say and how you've seen the impact of love on your business thank you so much Jan thanks for thinking of me and thanks so much for that introduction I had no idea and that goes right to the point of you have no idea how you're impacting mm -hmm. other people's lives or you have no idea how you're actually being perceived in the world Right. You just have to go out and be. Yeah. And so for um, the purposes of World Love Week, we're just going to, you know, and we're coming up on Valentine's Day, so there's World Love Day. And um, I think love in that, you know, in that meaning, in that space, really takes on two very distinct personalities. The one is the external love that we feel, that we show, that we express, that we focus on others. And the other is the self-love. How do we take care of ourselves? How do we pay attention to ourselves in a way that's kind of like that, put your own air mask on first before you help others on the airplane? Yeah. It's how do you make sure that you are fueling yourself for your life because the better fuel, the more fuel you can give yourself, the more you have to give and express and share with others. And also the whole idea that we need to model positive behavior for other people because it's very much like you said, you don't really know always how you impact people and who you're really impacting. And we learn, I mean, we're like, no different than we were when we learned how to crawl or walk or talk. We, we copied other people. And we do that out of a true essence of wanting to do what works and what's best. And so to me, the more people can model taking care of themselves in a true, loving, accepting, compassionate way, those people naturally have more love, more energy to share with the world. And that's what they say, you know, love doesn't become less by giving it away. The more you give, the more you have to give. Yes. And clearly, the more you give, the more you get in return. And that's never, it's amazing how people who truly give love with no boundaries are not thinking about what they're getting in return, but what they get in return fuels them in return. And it allows them to create more and be more loving and more heart-centered. And, and that's, that's pretty much the space I live in, that by the time someone comes to me, you know, if we're talking about image and personal brand and how you show up in the world and who you be in the world, that's my space. That's the part that I'm working with individuals and groups, but mostly individuals at this point, on a very highly personalized level of showing up. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of us who have lived long enough, uh, we've learned that we've been taking on other people's expressions. We've take, taken on other people's energy. We've taken on other people's image of us. And especially women have gone into our masculine selves just to get the job done. Right. And so we've given away that very, you know, feminine creative energy. And men also have let go of that lighter side and say, you know, stop doing what they love for fun. If they love to fish, they're not fishing. If they love to play basketball, they're not playing basketball. They don't have time. So whatever it is in our lives that shows us first how we love ourselves, we have to make a commitment, make a very deep and often hard to live with commitment 
to do what's most important for us first and then be able to show that to others and help model that for our children, for our friends, for our families, and for our businesses. So as a CEO of a small business, as an independent business owner, you know, how do I show up not looking haggard and overworked? And, <laughs> you know, that's the possibility. That's, and really, we see a lot of people who do model that persona. And, you know, in, in all honesty, I see so many people struggling. It's not that they don't care. It's really hard to balance uh, all of the demands that are required for a small business or any business person in business today. It's coming from you. And then you you add on that your family and your community ties. And there's just, you know, for some, uh, for a culture that supposedly has more free time, it's really stressful. It's very stressful. And it's, I don't know if you recognize this on the days that I don't have structured business to do, and I'm taking care of my personal services or my personal needs, I think very clearly about how do I actually work? Like, you know, if, I, if I didn't have work, I would be able to fill my time with just those personal needs very easily. And we don't have that luxury. So the idea is to figure out there will never be balance. I do personally believe that you can have it all. I don't believe you can have it all at the same time. I do believe that we need to allow for, you know, certain, certain times that are going to be more stressful and more full and other times that are going to allow us to take the time, clear our heads, uh, clear our calendars and show ourselves a different kind of love but at the same time, when we're looking at that business, self, community, mm -hmm. there, you know, those are the three places that we actually do show up the most. Um, of those three, I would say we show up most for our work, for our business, whether we're independent or, or corporately employed. It doesn't really matter. The world of business is no longer distinctly defined from the rest of your world. There's no longer a black line. Especially if you're an entrepreneur. Definitely. Definitely if you're an entrepreneur. It's almost like, uh, you know, to me a vacation is leaving my house. <laughs> well, and you know, when I get on a plane and generally the person next to me will say, you know, where are you going? Business, pleasure. And I say, the good news is it can always be business and it's always a pleasure. I'm very, very clear about building in business and pleasure, no matter where I am and no matter where I go. And the minute my business no longer is pleasure, it will no longer be my business. Right, right. And that's an important thing to consider. I've, I've had that distinction modeled for me by brilliant people over the years. Right. And the biggest message to myself is don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to make a change. Don't be afraid to leap forward. Don't be afraid. It's just because you can't see what's behind the next door. Right. You know, it occurred to me as you're describing that, um, that people that are able to see themselves as part of the equation, that's how I look at it. You know, many people get into business like business or your bottom line or whatever your to-do list is. That's the only equation. It's sort of like me doesn't matter as long as that stuff gets done. But people that are able to put themselves in the equation generally tend to relate to their customers better. Because they're living real and open lives. And they see them as people. Yes. And they haven't lost their vulnerability. They haven't put Ooh. that away. In the wow. beginning, when I first moved into the image business full time, Huh. I really felt that I had to be the model because it was so new and the communities I was in had no experience of what is an image consultant, what is an executive image consultant, what is a corporate image consultant. So, you know, I had the little bob and I had the cute suits and mm -hmm. I was modeling what was right at the time, what was appropriate yeah. at the time. And then as the, t as the pendulum swings, and it does... Mm -hmm you know, things change and our communities and our realities and our lives change. And 
if you're familiar at all with the book, The Pendulum. Right. And it's a brilliant interpretation of how the trends change our lives, how the changes in the world impact our lives, and how over time we go from being all about we to all about me. Mm-hmm. So you can have a, a we time frame where we're all focused on community and family and all the businesses that are now coming to, into being right. are focused on the good of the community, the good of the world. It's a much bigger picture. Right. And then the pendulum will swing a little further and we'll go back into a me society. And it'll be all about the individual. Well, in the world of image how you show up, how you show the world your own value starts with the minute you open your eyes in the morning and what do you do for yourself to pull yourself together so that when you do walk out the door, you belong to the world. And that is true whether we're in a me society or a we society. Isn't that true? It always starts with you. Yes. That, I never thought of it that way. And the, the idea of the vulnerability, that's really huge because, you know, there's a lot of talk about that now um, in terms of marketing and being authentic. But I talked to a guy and he runs a huge internet uh, online SEO business. I and mean, he does SEO and websites for countries. Okay. And he said, I I love him, right? He's a country boy and he had this, and he was so funny. He's like, marketing, it just isn't any different than from when my daddy did it. It's the same thing. The tools may have changed, but it's no different. You got to connect with the person and have something they want. And then you have to let them know that you're the one that can give it to them. And I thought, that's so brilliant. It's really true. The idea of connecting with people, it's no different. We just have a bunch of tools. And what I hear you saying is that the connection starts here. I have to be in my own body, in my own life, or it's very hard to authentically connect to another person. And we are living in an age of authenticity. That's the message that I've been delivering now for a number of years, is that for a long time, we were taught to put ourselves away. Yes. For uh-huh. a long time in the world of business, we uh-huh. were not invited in. We were simply the channel of delivery. The individual was simply part of the package. Gotcha. With the shift that we've gone through in the last 10 years, the individual is the product. No matter what you're selling, and this is why I think one of the biggest messages I share is that The old you cannot introduce the future you in the world. You must take the time with yourself to spend with yourself and really get clear on what is important to you now. Because what was important five years ago, 10 years ago, even a year ago, may no longer be important. About a year and a half ago, I was uh, was on the floor doing my morning yoga and stretch routine and I, I was very sore and I just didn't feel well and I hadn't felt well for months. And I'd been working through a number of the symptoms and, and you know, really seeking help, which I always did. But that very morning I went into crisis and I was on the floor and I really suddenly couldn't move. I looked down and it looked like someone had hoovered air and water under my skin. I had put on about 25 pounds of water practically overnight my body was in crisis, and I had to go to bed. That was my only choice, yeah. was to surrender to the reality that something was wrong, that no one was able to fix until then, and I was going to need to you know, spend time fixing that. And it took nearly a year to actually come back, but I had to make the decision that at that very moment, there was nothing in the world that was more important than my health and that I had to trust that whatever I was doing was the right thing. Because at that, at that moment in time, it's not enough that you're in the image business and the only thing that fits you is yoga pants. <laughs> it's, that's not really helpful, but no. it's the reality that unless you're willing to take the time to address your issues, to address what's critical for you, 
and then be very, very mindful and thoughtful about what your next steps are. What are you willing to do in the world? How do you want to be in the world? How do you want to be known? How do you want to show up? What is the message and the purpose that brought you here? Mm -hmm. And those are the thoughts that I had plenty of time to ponder because I was sleeping 16 hours. Because you're laying in bed. So that was all I could do was ponder, meditate, and, you know, have my little private discussions. Um, well, I'm really glad you, you described it that way because, to me, in, in all of my life, I've had many incarnations of not-so-happy, healthy Jan um, and really had to work through a lot of crap. And one of the things that I found the most important that has just kept coming back over and over again is, one, when I really get down into myself, I found that I have this incredible, like, never-ending well of love that's just bursting out, which to me was such a shock because I'm kind of like not really so happy-go-lucky. And I was like, wow, who would have thought? And then the second thing was to realize that the real battle for me was to remember to ask myself one critical question, and you just said it, and it's not, what do I want to do? What am I going to leave behind? What do I feel? It's who do I want to be right now? Right. Who do I want to be right now? That was shown to me that this was a choice that we make all the time. And it changes. It's not a, like you said, it's not a one-time question. You ask, ask it, answer it. Hopefully the answer will be similar many times. I want to be a loving person, a compassionate person, a fun person, all kinds of things like that. But to remember to ask myself that, I found that I had a totally different quality of life after that. Totally different quality of life when I asked myself, who do I want to be? Um, because it, it makes you get to a different place. Then the idea of what you're going to do next when it springs after that question, is really different. Yes. And the other thing I've started really understanding is that so many of us treat ourselves as if we would treat the most horrible person we know. Like we wouldn't even treat our dog that way. We wouldn't talk right. to our dog that way. We right. wouldn't expect them to sit at the computer for 18 hours with no potty break or no food. We wouldn't expect them to do, I mean, I could go on and on, but entrepreneurs, you know who I'm talking to. Um, because we fall into that trap of thinking that what we're doing is more important than who we're being. Right. When ironically, it's who you are. It's, it's tapping into that place that gives you the energy like you said, the fuel to do those tasks or to create that movement or to make that impact. And the truth is what I learned more than anything was that the time I spent not doing mm -hmm. and letting the universe conspire on my behalf, right. whether the universe is my next door neighbor, my friend, my colleague, my business, no matter what, we all have so many balls in the air. We've already planted so many seeds. We have so many projects in motion. Mm -hmm. And if you continue to push in one direction and focus only in one direction, then that's where your energy goes. But if you let go and you open your energy to let whatever is going to come through, come through. And I don't mean this in a totally woo-woo kind of way. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about just quieting your mind, quieting your body, and allowing yourself to go do something fun. Yeah. Allowing yourself to just go sit and have a coffee outside, enjoy the sun, um, and, you know, allow yourself to watch that video that you've been wanting to watch for so long, but you fall asleep before you even hit, hit, hit play. Right. So those are the things that when you do shut your mind off and you stop the focus, that's when the seeds grow. 
That's when the energy comes around. That's when you get to see what rises to the top and what shows up in front of everything else. And then you have some information to refocus and move again. But if we never stop and we continue to push constantly, then there's no room for that kind of growth. All you get is what you physically do. The minute you start being and stop doing, then a lot of other things are going to show up for you. And then it gives you your choice of what do I want to do and how does that support me in being who I want to be? Right. That is so true because um, I'm a big, big head banger. You know, like I want, I will do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what can I say? We're covering that. It's, you know, it's, it's just vision. how I am. You know? <laughs> it's like, okay, I want that. I'm like, boom, 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 boom. And then eventually I'll stop and I'll go, damn, this isn't working. But and I'm, my head hurts. <laughs> and my head hurts. And people are irritated at me, with me, of course. But, you know, I'm also creative. So I know from this creative side of me, it's not like I sit there and think, oh, I'm not going to create something amazing. I just do whatever occurs to me. And it's always amazing. Whether I like it or not is not the point. And I, I have that battle, you know, because we've all been taught, you know, not to be lazy and to you know, keep your head to the grindstone. And we have all these messages. And I'm really glad you said that about balance. We can have it all, but maybe not all at the same time. Because if we don't stop, we can't find out where we might need to regroup or to look differently. And I got to say, I think you were very courageous to take a year to let your body heal. It was hard. It was scary. It was hard. There were a lot of times I just thought, this is crazy. I could get a fix instead of a cure and be on my way. Right. But I wanted a cure. And I knew that I'd been battling something my whole life, Mm -hmm. that my opportunity was now. And if you really think about it, the life expectancy for someone today is close to 100. Mm -hmm. And that means I'm, you know, kind of halfway there. And if I don't figure it out now... (laughs) It's going to be a long ride. And once again, I'm going to say, you know, would you would you do that to your dog? I mean, would you right. say to your dog, okay, get your butt up there and go to work? Right. No. Or we say it to ourselves. We are worse. If our best friend heard us talk to ourselves, they would slap us. Yeah. If we heard our best friend say the things to themselves that we say to ourselves, we would slap them. Right but we don't slap ourselves and we say it to ourselves over and over and over. And we are hardest on ourselves. We are our own worst enemies in that respect. So the best thing we can do, and this is also an aspect of self love combined with world love Mm -hmm. is surround yourself with people who will love you unconditionally, who will love you to the point of telling you the truth until you can actually hear it. And that's important because we tune out. We get so many messages. We are bombarded with over 50,000 messages a day. That's a lot for our little brains. You know, the cavemen and our earlier ape brain, we didn't have to put up with that kind of messaging. But today there's so much noise in our heads. The only way we are able to quiet that is to actually go inside And whether it's meditation or walking or music or whatever your form of peace in your mind is, exercise it as often as possible. That's my biggest recommendation is get out in the sunshine, get outdoors, get some fresh air and go inside. Those are the two things that will help more than anything. Hmm. Wow. You know, I remember when I met you, you blew my my mind because I didn't know there was an image consultant here was this woman she's so beautiful she's so dynamic and you just looked at me like you didn't look at me like really honestly what I expected which was what the hell are you wearing (laughs) (laughs) because as an artist I see a lot of things but I don't see clothes and hair I just don't I know when it's wrong but I I've just never focused on it but what I was so struck by is that you kept talking about showing up in the world is about who you are and my job is to help you pick things that you put on your body that help you share that 
it wasn't like here I want you to look good it was more like you're good let's make the package express that so that you feel comfortable so that can come through exactly and no one had ever talked about that before and and that really really uh, opened me up in a different way because I think everyone here listening has had the experience of meeting someone somewhere that was just vibrant and alive and it it wasn't what their job was or what they were selling or what they were wearing that you noticed first and, or that you remembered but in the business world what we don't want to do is be remembered for the wrong thing right it, you know and and it's it's great to have that package together at least for someone like me so that it's not something that detracts from my message well, an image is not a cookie cutter business. Some people would have, would have you believe it is. But in my world, the way I work, if it's an inside out, outside in job, mm -hmm. then we're going to start inside right. and figure out who are you, who do you want to be, how do you want to be known, why are you here? Those are the questions I'm asking right up front. Because if you tell me you're an artist, you tell me you're a creative, then certainly you're not my suit girl. Right. Number one, and you may not even be my shoe girl. I've got yeah. a couple of artists who absolutely refuse to wear shoes. And yeah, I'll wear shoes, but not not girly shoes. I, I don't get them. <laughs> and it also depends where you live. Do you live in a place that has weather? Well, then you're required to consider different things. But your image goes so far beyond the clothes you wear. It's just that the clothes are a tool that give us the visual message. And as an artist, you know better than anyone. Yes. That, that visual message is so powerful, that's what lingers. And the whole point is to create a visual message that enables others to see into you before you even get to say a word. Because in so many cases, you may never get to say a word. They may only see you from across the room but you want to be so aligned and so authentic with your message from the inside out and head to toe that you trigger an interest in someone, even from a distance to say, who is that? Mm -hmm. I want to know that person. And I'm that stalker. I am totally that stalker. I will walk into a room filled with people. I just do a quick once over the room and I will find two or three people who are just interesting yeah. just by seeing them, their energy really pulls me in. And if I can't get to them, I will turn to everyone around me and say, who is that? Because now we have LinkedIn and Facebook and right. I will find them <laughs> in a nice way, not in an yeah. icky way, but right. I will go look for you because if you have initiated that, you know, question for me, then I, I want an answer. I want to know who you are, what you do, and are we supposed to play together? Yeah. Is there some form of energy and love that we're supposed to create together? Well, I love that idea that you're talking about image because, you know, we live in a visual world and we connect with people visually. It's why I encourage everybody to do videos and audios. We, all the signals about people as we connect are, so many of them are back in our brains somewhere. It, it's all going on behind the scenes and and only when you see someone and hear them and meet them can you really start to get the whole picture and right. you just described it you can get a whole feeling and, and energy from someone if you've never even talked to them absolutely and video is amazing because it also allows you to hear their voice yes mm -hmm. and you hear their expression and their method their um, you know, their, their method of expression, the sound of their voice, how they actually pitch and tone. And, and that's a big part of that self, that, that first impression. Yeah. So assume that 55% of a first impression is completely nonverbal. It's just your body language and your appearance. 38% of that same first impression is the tone of your voice. So if I were talking to you like this right now, do you think many listeners would stay tuned in? I would say not, unless on the video screen they could see that I was actually Minnie Mouse. <laughs> right, right. Oh, that's so it would make sense. Then it would make sense. Mm -hmm. Because after that, in that first impression spectrum, it's only 7% 
valued of the content that we use. So the actual words, which means I have to get close enough to hear your words. Video gives me the opportunity to put all those three pieces together. Even if I can't be with you in the same space, I can certainly get a deeper essence of who you are. Right. It's like I tell people, it's not a perfect introduction, but it's way better. And, and now we have the tools and technology to make that really it, uh, multiple times so that you can actually engage with people like they're a person. And that's really what so many people are talking about, whether it's corporations or small business, that is really making their bottom line change. And that is when they're able to jump on the court and communicate very effectively with their group right, right. and do something that's specific towards them. You know, one of the examples is that CVS stopped selling cigarettes. cigarettes and, you know, they got some flack for that, but they decided, well, we're in the health business. It makes sense. And more and more businesses are doing things that they, it's not right or wrong. It's, is it aligned? with yes. their message. And I heard you talk about that a lot. We deal in a billion, billions of people economy. And most businesses aren't dealing with billions of people. Right. So finding the right group, it's even more important. And knowing them, knowing what's important mm -hmm. to them and making sure that those values are aligned. That's what the age of authenticity is all about. Yeah. It's not about the numbers. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, Apple didn't start out attracting billions of people. Right. Right. It was actually for a very small community of creatives mm -hmm. to enable them to do things on a computer that a PC could not do. Right. Right. And when you think about how that grew, that's the organic expression. That's the power of the organic expression is that it grew to become something that everyone on the planet wants some aspect of it. And that's the best thing you can hope for. But at the same time, if your authentic aligned audience is 10,000 people, do everything you can in your power to satisfy those 10,000 people and you will have a happy life, and they will have a happy life. Right. You will be doing the we part of, of you know, your contribution. Mm -hmm. And in the end, we all get value from each other's contribution. Yeah, that is so true. Well, that is beautiful. Lauren, um, how can people find out more about you and how they can work with you? I have a website. They can find me at laurensolomon.com. It's L-A-U-R-E-N-S-O-L-O-M-O-N, like the king. So laurensolomon.com. And I also have a book called Image Matters, and that can be found on Amazon or bnn.com. It is available uh, in paperback and Kindle on Amazon. Great. Yeah, definitely get that. It's an awesome book. Lauren, you are one of my favorite people. I was so thrilled when your name came up on the list. I was like immediately stuck my name in there. I was like, I want to interview her because you really do have such a joy and glow about who you are and how you work with people. And that is, it's not only a privilege to be around, but it is such a gift. And I want to thank you for sharing it with us today. Thank you so much for having me, Jan. It's always a pleasure. I was so happy to see your name pop up on my screen. <laughs> so I'm glad we were able to make it work. Thank you. Thank you. Well, everybody stick around. We've got uh, tons more people in World Love Week. World Love Week is really about combining love, business, and, and making the world a better place and finding that balance between your heart and the economy and how to play bigger out in the world with love. So thank you so much and we'll see more on World Love Week.